I've got the finished product open over here and you can see that we've got all of our recent expenses, but since we have more than eight, we also have this button to view all expenses. And if I click on this, it goes to a new route, which shows us all our expenses and gives us a total of how many there are. And you can see that once again, I get the same kind of readout, same kind of table, except presumably it would just list as many as I have. In this case, I only have nine, so it shows just one more that was showing on the homepage over here. So that's what we wanna do in our app right here. You can see that right now I've got nothing going on, but if I add some groceries as a budget and maybe set like this to 1200, and then maybe I add something like coffee for like 123 maybe, you can see that I am getting this readout down here, but no matter how many I have, I don't have any kind of button that will redirect me to a new route. So first of all, what I wanna do is add at least eight grocery expenses. So let me do that quickly and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I've gone ahead and added, I now have nine different items. They all happen to be for this groceries, which is totally fine. But you can see now that they're all showing for me in a list. So what I wanna do is come over here to my dashboard. I'm listing through all my expenses and sending them all to a table. The first thing I need to do is I need to limit how many are sent here. So to make this a little bit easier to see, let's go ahead and break this down and say, after I've sorted, then what I wanna do is then I wanna slice off zero to eight. Now what that should do is chop off the final one, which I think is coffee. So if I save this, yeah, there it goes, it's gone. Okay, so now that I've got only the top eight showing, then I wanna show below this table a link to my expenses. So below here, I'm gonna say if expenses.length, if that is greater than eight, I don't need to check that expenses exist because I already did that out here, then what I can do is go ahead and show a link. So I'm gonna grab link here. This should be from React Router DOM and I'll check that that imported correctly in a second here, but I wanna point this to view all expenses. And this is like the links href here. I need to point this to expenses, which will be the route I eventually point this to. And then I'll give this a class name, uh, button and button dark. So we've got all this showing up here. Let me make sure that this link import showed up correctly. Yeah, there it is right here in React Router DOM. So if I save this, we should be set to go. If I click on this though, we're gonna get an error because that's not found, all right? And that's the custom error message. And so let's go backwards. So right here, we actually now need to pass this in in the app as one of our additional routes we have available to us. So I'll come over to the app. And then right here, let's see, let's just add it as another child of the main route here. And I'll pass this down and say that the path here in this case, this needs to be expenses. So for now, if I were to save that, and if I were to come over here and save you all expenses, it's gonna look the exact same because I'm saying that the element is dashboard, the loader is dashboard loader, et cetera, et cetera. I'm actually not gonna have an action. I'm also just gonna let the, kind of the main error route handle this up here. And so what I wanna do instead is have two things. First of all, we're gonna pass in the element here will be the expenses page. And then down here, we'll have an expenses loader. Now let's go ahead and come at this one out create our expenses page, and then I'll save it. So if I come over this way, inside pages here, we'll have expenses page.jsx. And then let's go ahead and template this thing out. Expenses page, that should work just fine. Come back over here, and we'll do the old backspace trip and see if it gives it to us. Yeah, there we go, okay. So up here, let's make sure that this goes to a route, and it is, so that works for me. We'll save it there, and now it should say expenses page when I save it, which is just all the template we've got right here. So that's good for now. So what we also need is some kind of way to get data into this. Now you might be tempted to think, well, I know I can pass in props to this page, but remember the only place it's defined where this path is, is in our actual created browser, browser router. So what I need to do is actually pass in a loader that has my expenses in there. Now the good news is we've got our dashboard right over here and we've already got a loader that does very much the same thing. So I'm gonna grab all this, come over to my expenses page and add this up top here. We'll change this to say expenses loader. And in this case, I only need my expenses for now. Now down below here, since we're loading it, we actually need to get access to it. How do we do that? Well, what we need is to extract from here expenses. And then this is all gonna come from that custom hook, use loader data. That again comes from React Router DOM. So let's go ahead and add a little note here. And now if I save this and come back over here, Let's make sure we get this expenses loader showing in like that. And first of all, let me come up here. Yep, it pulled it in right here, so that's good. See this expenses page, this can actually be the kind of default import, which means I need to come back over here. I must've used a different template over here. So let's see, this one right here, we can say our default export is expenses page. 
And then before we fix that problem where I forgot to add a comma, let's come over here and pull this one in too and do the little backspace trick. And this will be our helpers. All right, so back over this way, we need to make sure we add a comma here like that expenses and expenses loader. So this is our named export. This is the default one, which is the actual JSX. So if I come over this way, what we're doing is sending this loader right down here and we're pulling it in. Whenever we hit this route, it should be hitting this loader, pulling in our data here, which would be our expenses, which we can get from our use loader data hook and show that in right here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we're gonna add a class here. We'll call it grid large. So we've got a large grid as kind of the, the wrapper around this route. We'll have an H1 here that says all expenses. And just in case somebody manually goes to this page, we wanna first of all, make sure we have expenses and that we have expenses.length. And it needs to be greater than zero, so it can't be an empty array. And if that's the case, then what we wanna do is return some JSX. Otherwise, we'll simply return a paragraph that says no expenses to show or something like that. So assuming we actually do have some expenses here, we want this to be inside of a div with the class of grid medium. And here we'll have an H2 that says recent expenses. And then inside here, we'll have a small tag inside of the H2 that simply counts how many expenses we have. This will be in parentheses here, and we'll simply add expenses.length and then add total outside of this. So if I save it here, we should see recent expenses total nine. All right, nine total. Now we've already written the components that are gonna display all this. That would be our table. And I can go ahead and import that with a click and pass my expenses as all of my expenses. So this time I'm not gonna limit them to a certain amount and close that out. So there we go, all my expenses are now showing. Let me just come up here and clean this up a bit. So we'll add this as like component, component imports. So now if I come back to my home route, you can see down here, I've got my first date showing. If I click on this, it should take me over here to all of my expenses, which are now displaying. Now, if I go over to the finished code, you can see that I've got a few extra things. Number one, I've got a link to the budget page itself, which means if I click on this, I actually need to have a budget page just for that individual budget. We've also got these buttons here we have yet to create as well. We've also got this delete section. So we've got couple little things left to do, but they're things we've done before. So hopefully they will be refreshers rather than kind of first time things. Where we'll start though, is we'll add these two columns to the table so that we can link out to whatever budget has been linked. And then we'll also have a way to delete the individual item. 